Hello, a good day once again to all of you. Welcome back to our webinar of Moxibustion Care of Lamp. So we already talked about previously about Moxibustion in terms of TCM and Western medicine. Today, I would like to welcome you back for the continuation of our webinar of on Moxibustion, but this time we'll be focusing more on Moxibustion in regards to evidence-based medicine. So what are the current evidence-based findings for moxibustion treatment? So with that being said, let's begin. Okay, so first up, came out in May 26, 2022. Um, it's entitled, The Effect of Moxacone Moxibustion Therapy on Cognitive Function and Brain Metabolic Changes in MCI or Your Mild Cognitive Impairment Patients, a pilot H-MRS study. No? So this one came out on the Frontiers in Aging Neuroscience, Volume 14 in 2022. So this is a randomized drug controlled parallel group trial no? to explore the efficacy and safety of moxacone moxa and don donepecil on the treatment of patients with MCI. Okay, So their parameters would be to measure your and acetyl aspartate over total crea ratio and your choline total creatinine ratio in the bilateral hippocampus and bilateral posterior cingulate gyrus for patients with mild uh, cognitive impairment. So actually their findings revolve around that the MMSE or your mini mental state exam scores uh, in the drug group decrease when compared with the acupoint group and the normal control group. The scores of your MMSE and your MOCA scoring, MOCA stands for Montreal Cognitive Assessment, in the acupoint group and sham acupoint group at all time, points were better than those in the drug group, which were similar to those in the normal control group. So the conclusion of this study is that moxibustion could improve the cognitive function of patients with MCI. Mechanism may be related to the improvement of abnormal brain metabolism in your hippocampus and your posterior cingulate gyrus. So let's explore more about this study. Nowadays, when we have a mild cognitive impairment, technically the drug of choice that we used to give it would be donepecil. No? It's to prevent, uh, to slow down the progression of MCI to Alzheimer's disease. Also, um, rivastigmine is also given for this kind of patients. However, they noted that um, cholesterol inhibitors have a slight efficacy in the treatment of MCI, and there's a lot of safety issues as well as side effects. So their side effects are dizziness, diarrhea, insomnia, and so on and so forth. So they're trying to explore moxibustion as a supplementary or complementary treatment for patients with MCI. So uh, MOXA, as you know, effective with few adverse effects. Um, based on current research, it states that the points, no, your DO20, your CB4, stomach 36, and GB39, acupoints have positive effects on cognitive function, especially in MCI and Alzheimer's disease. So they're trying to find out the effect of moxibustion at these acupuncture points. So this is the flow chart generally of the study. So 234 participants were actually screened for eligibility. And then they finally came out with a group of MCI group of 108, which was randomized to three control groups. So one group would receive the drug, which is donepecil. The other group would receive a sham acupoint or a sham moxa, meaning moxibustion at far away areas than our typical acupoints. And the acupoint group would receive moxibustion at, at the four acupuncture points that we mentioned. So after they, they do this treatment, they would evaluate using a neuropsychological assessment and an MRS detection at the end of the second month of treatment. Then they would they analyze the data. So for those of you wondering what points they use for this study, they use four. You have your DO20, CB4, stomach 36, and gallbladder 39. The letters A, B, C, D 
are the locations or points that they're going to use for the sham acupoint group or the sham moxa group no so for those of you wondering what were the treatment protocol um each point approximately three to five minutes of moxa cones and they receive treatment every other day so 15 times for one course and then usually the the patients completed two courses or 30 sessions 30 sessions of moxibustion given every other day with each point three to five minutes no and then for the control group of the donepecil they give roughly um five milligrams of oral donepecil so these are the demographic data so if you can notice we have more um, females than male most are in the senior age group and then their course of the disease roughly going to two years. Two years na po silang they have this uh, MCI. No? They were suffering from it for two years. So this is the MRS or magnetic resonance spectroscopy before treatment. So this is before treatment. Huh? So technically the normal control group, those with normal cognitive function, they would have a score of 29, average score of 29, and for the MOCA score, average score of um, 26. No? So the MMSE, just remember, the lower the score, the more serious the damage. No? And then for the same thing with the MOCA score. MOCA score, uh, the lower the score, the more severe it is, the higher the score, the better the cognitive function. And the rest, they just measured the ratios of your NAA or total creatinine, choline total creatinine ratio in your hippocampus and posterior cingulate gyrus. And after treatment, if you notice, no, the points in the acupoint and even in the sham acupoint group has increased considerably versus the drug group or those who receive uh, oral donepecil. So if you can take a look at this chart, it shows to us here that those who receive moxibustion at the <clears throat> at those four acupuncture points has better scores than those who receive the traditional Western medication of um, oral done donepecil. No? So, but later we'll have a more visual chart for this one. This slide is a bit too toxic, no? But this is just for your reference. And then take a look. The MMSE scores at different time points. So they measured it at a score of baseline after a month, on the second month, and on the fifth month. So take a look at your <clears throat> acupoint group versus your drug group. It has been higher all throughout eh, actually no of the treatment courses no from extending up until the fifth month usually acupuncture group has or moxibustion group has a better score than the than the drug control group also take a look another thing i want to emphasize the sham acupoint group those who receive the false moxa location points Take a look. They would also have a higher score than those who received the oral traditional drug for MCI. Almost, all, almost already equivalent to the average score of 29 for those with normal cognitive function. So what I want to say here is that um, the uh, scores, whether you do acupuncture or sham acupuncture, it still has an effect locally and systemic that can bring about higher MMSE scores in these groups. No? So sometimes if you're doubting yourself about the location, don't. Because as we have seen in this study, even a sham or a false location of moxibustion can still have an effect can still have an effect on the cognitive functions in patients with MCI. The counterpart is your MOCA scoring, Montreal Cognitive Assessment. Take a look. Take a look. Um, for the acupuncture group, the baseline, usually the drug group, has a higher score. But on the first, on the second, and on the fifth month of treatment, the acupoint group remains higher than your drug group. Same thing with your sham acupuncture group. It has a higher score than the 
than those who are taking donepecil. Those who are taking donepecil, if you notice, they started at uh, 21 and then 23, 24, and 23 again. So it declines. So the efficacy of the treatment declines at a point in time. No? So this is a more graphical representation or more more nice picture. So for those, the straight horizontal line are those patients with normal function. Then for those acupoint group, actually uh, the acupoint groups are the ones in the blue no, or violet. And then the sham acupoints are on the yellow. And those who receive the typical drug of donepecil is on the green. So as what you can notice here, as time goes by, take a look your donepecil scored inferiorly in terms of your MMSE and your MOCA score as compared to those who receive MOXA, whether at the correct acupoint or the incorrect acupuncture point. So basically, this chart tells us that those who receive moxibustion, whether at the right or wrong location, still outscores those who receive the traditional drug of donepecil. No? Okay. Also, this is a brain MRS spectroscopy. No? Basically, it just measures the ratio, but um, this figure just tells us that at the end of the second month of treatment, the in specifically in the right hippocampus, no, the N-acetyl aspartate over total creatine ratio is increased to 1.4 as compared to the control group. So if you notice, it has more reddish lines here, meaning more active, meaning the, the ratio increases, meaning your cognitive function um, is better. It means it's being used accordingly and appropriately. That's why you have a more usage of cognitive function for those who receive the moxibustion treatment. No? So take a look. After two months of treatment, no? Patients with MCI in the acupoint, sham acupuncture group showed increases in your ratio as what, what we have mentioned. No, The MMSC scores in the acupoint group were higher than those in the drug group. In the fifth month of follow-up, we observed that compared with the drug group, the MMSE and the MOCA scores of acupoint and sham acupoint groups maintained at an elevated level. And then um, the hip or your hippocampus, the green one here, is an important hub of the neural network for learning and memory. And any pathological in the changes in this region may lead to memory disorders. No? And then take a look. No? Uh, actually, the red lines basically just states that um, there's decreased activity in terms of right hippocampus and PCG in terms of those levels. And then... I just wanted to highlight here in patients with MCI of acupoint sham acute drug levels, the levels of choline total creatinine in the right hip were significantly decreased. However, in comparison with the normal controls, there were no reduction in choline total creatinine in the left hip among the three treatment groups. So it can possibly point to a neuroprotective mechanism by moxibustion therapy. No? And then hip neuroplasticity pathways provide a compelling basis for therapeutic intervention. So after two months of treatment, they found that the NAATCR in the bilateral hip and choline total creatine in the right hip in the three treatment groups increase and no significant differences in the other respective ratios. No? So um, basically, I highlighted here that moxibustion could enhance the resting state, functional connectivity between bilateral hip and other brain regions. And then the improvement of your MMSE scores in the acupoint group was better than in the drug group. No? Also, take a look at this blue line I highlighted. Besides, the sham acupoint group also showed improvement in MMSE and MOCA scores. And the long-term effect of the acupoint and sham acupoint groups in improve, improving the scores of your MMSE and MOCA score was better. So thermal stimulation is the crucial factor affecting the curative effect of MOXA. No? Also, patients with MCI display decreased NAATCR in the bilateral hip and the Choline, total choline in the right hip, which could be improved by moxibustion together with cognitive function improvement. 
So usually um they're just analyzing no in terms of neuroimaging studies the the levels of these certain neurotransmitters no and then it seems to point out that moxibustion can prevent or lessen the the decreased level of your NAA and total creatinine ratio so um ito, take a look Improvement of your NAA or your total creatinine ratio in the bilateral PCG may demonstrate the improved cognitive function in patients with MCI after MOXA treatments. No? So, the local thermal effect and spectral radiation produced by MOXA may be the mechanism for treating your MCI. So, in this study, they concluded that Regulations of your NAA total creatinine in the bilateral hip, bilateral PCG, and choline total creatinine in the right hip may be the major pattern of brain response to MOXA treatment for mild cognitive impairment. So they concluded that moxibustion and even sham moxibustion can improve the cognitive scores of those patients suffering from MCI. Okay? Next slide that we're going to tackle came out in January 27, 2022, moxibustion for primary dysmenorrhea. So we all know dysmenorrhea or women-related uh, cramps can be alleviated by moxibustion. So they tried to analyze it. No? So they concluded that moxibustion treatment for primary dysmenorrhea focuses on adjusting your endocrine hormones, regulating immune function, and neuro-related factors, and improving uterine microcirculation. They also stated here that moxa has four mechanisms of actions, specifically your heat, your light, your moxa smoke, and your drug effects. As what we have discussed before in the Western point of view for moxibustion. We already talked about that, but it's nice to know that they also acknowledge that moxa is not only heat. You also have the light effect, moxa smoke, and drug effects. Okay. Um, usually, they would also, this slide just basically tells us that um, certain brain areas are also involved, specifically in the terms of um, PMS symptoms. No? So that's just what this slide is telling us. And then moxibustion treats disease by burning moxa, as you have all know. And then um, they, they actually believe no, that increasing the heat or temperature hyperpyrexia can heat local tissues, strengthen metabolism and enzyme reactions, dilate microvessels, thereby strengthening automatic congestion and enhancing phagocytosis, treat local subacute and chronic inflammation. Second, it can reduce the excitability of nerve endings, thereby having your analgesic effects. <clears throat> So in summary, what they're trying to say, the thermogenetic effect of MOXIE can not only affect the dynamic distribution of temperature filled in biological tissue under moxibustion and the thermal energy migration and change process caused by moxibustion heat also stimulate the spontaneous IR range of thermally sensitive acupoints to produce resonance or multiple effects. No? So they're trying to analyze it on a deeper scale. And then, um, moxibustion for primary dysmenorrhea. So they found out that actually they put it in a more visual presentation that moxa, no? aside from heating the local area, you can affect your endocrine hormones, regulate your immune system, also improve neuro-related factors, and then locally at the uterus, you can reduce your velocity index, uh, resistance index, improve the contraction, and it also has a neurological effect that can regulate the intensity of brain metabolic activities in pain-related matters. So basically, MOXA's effect is not only locally on the uterus. It has effect on the brain, the nerves, the immune system, and even the secretion of hormones. As we can see, it reduces your prostaglandins ratio and increase your serum progesterone and reduce your uh, estradiol. It can reduce AVP no? 
and oxytocin that causes your contraction. So actually, this is a um, compilation of multiple studies. Um, I'm sure some of you are curious what are the points. Actually, it's all different. No? Take a look at this study, Herb Partition Moxa. So what they did was uh, acupuncture group um, or for the moxibustion, the points that they use for this one is Splin 6. And then they measure the clinical efficacy. Other studies would go for local area, GB4 or your CB4 at the lower abdomen for 40 minutes, beginning five days before menstruation. Another study use your CV8 or your navel point together with your spleen 6, stomach 36, LI4, and PC6. No? So they all evaluated the effects of MOXA at these points using different treatment parameters. See, another study, moxibustion, 20 minutes at GB4. And then this one used standard fire moxa combined with a ano, um, herbal medication. So they are using different methods to check whether moxa really does have an effect on dysmenorrhea. Other people, they do the back points, the lumbosacral points at the local back. Then some people would still go for CV12, CV4, stomach 36, and even your auricular acupoints. No? But basically, when they did MOXA versus acupuncture, they found out that MOXA has equivalent or even sometimes superior results than acupuncture. No? So again, different studies. I just wanted to show the variety of studies here that were used to compile this systematic review and meta-analysis. No? So um, this one we have discussed already. They were just acknowledging the effect of your thermal effect. So in order to relieve the pain for moxibustion, actually you need to stimulate uh, you need to have a noxious stimuli. Usually, your noxious stimuli would occur between 44 to 46 degrees Celsius eh, for you to inhibit pain relief, no? for you to have pain relief. No? And then HSPs, I already mentioned that before, that can help with systemic effects. Then the light effects, as I have mentioned uh, before in our webinars that the moxibustion, you also have NIR effects, infrared radiation, that can help with the physiological functions of the cells. No? Okay? So, uh, this one they found out, again, the peak value is between 0 0.8 to 5.6 micrometers. No? So, moxa can produce IR energy that penetrates the skin, reaches the muscle tissue, resonates with human acupoints, which may be one of the mechanisms of moxa. Aside from that, they also did a study for moxa smoke and found out that the smoke has anti-inflammatory effects, promotes blood lipid metabolism, improves immune function, has antibacterial, anti-tumor effects, and has a particular analgesic effect. And then the Artemis RG also rich in flavonoids, which is important in your antioxidants. And then for the drug effect, pharmacologic effects, as what we have discussed already, the wormwood leaves, you know, aside from doing the TCM action, can enhance immunity, anticoagulants, activate, complement, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, antiviral, and antioxygen-free radicals. So under the action of moxibustion heat, Material partition moxiva absorbs the drugs into the human body through the skin and capillaries at a specific rate to play the role of drugs. So aside from the heat of moxa, the pharmacologic effect of the herbal plant itself. No? So um, this paper actually expounds the effect of moxibustion for primary dysmenorrhea. So their conclusions first. No? Moxibustion. Uh, is effective in treating primary dysmenorrhea, but it is not clear which mechanism is effective for moxibustion. Second, they also concluded that there's still few studies that does this. And then third, studies on the mechanisms of moxibustion for primary dysmenorrhea um, is very few. So they're trying to find the exact mechanism, but they can conclude that it's effective, but they just don't know which mechanism. Okay? Next. Next study came out in July 2021. 
So moxibustion for treating cancer-related fatigue. This is a multi-cell, multi-sensor, multi-center assessor blinded RCT. No, so these were done by the Korean doctors. So actually, um, they divided it into a moxa group, sham moxa group, and a UC group or your usual care group. So, uh, their treatment protocol is 30 minute treatments twice per week for eight weeks. And then participants on the moxibustion group received two ignited moxa on the abdomen area, specifically CV8 and CV12, and then four electromagnetic moxa attached at LI4 and stomach 36 bilateral. So these were their treatment points. And then for the sham moxa group, receive treatment at non-acupoints. No? It's a point different from our traditional local acupoint location. And also, uh, here, the usual care group did not receive moxibustion treatment, maintained their usual conventional way of treating cancer-related fatigue. So this is a schematic diagram. So they screened 107 and randomized 96 96 patients to either MOXA group, SHAM MOXA, or usual care group. And then they did an analysis after treatment uh, following for several weeks, no? specifically 12 weeks, roughly three months. So this is the outcome. No? Take a look. You have your brief fatigue inventory scale and you have your FACEP score or your functional assessment of cancer therapy fatigue questionnaire. So if you notice, um, the MOXA group is the straight line. The sham MOXA group are the dotted lines. The usual care group is the one with straight and dotted lines combined. So take a look at the BFI score. The BFI score decreased for the MOXA group and the sham MOXA group. It decreased roughly from... One point to two points, eh, actually, their decrease now. So that's quite significant. And then your FAC F score is actually used to assess your fatigue outcome. No? So basically, you want a higher score for this one. So take a look. It's still the same. Take a look. Uh, your usual care group, their score is pegged at 23. But when you do your MOXA group and sham MOXA group, the FACF score actually increased from a 23 baseline. It increased roughly to 29 or even 30 points. So it improves your functional assessment scores. So here we can already start to see no, that moxibustion reduces your fatigue and increases your functionality. So the functionality actually, actually um, this is just a baseline data, but Aside from that, it has your physical role, emotion, cognitive, and then with certain symptoms as well. And then those that are with asterisks are the ones that are significant in value that they found out. No? So when doing moxibustion, they found out that the symptom of fatigue together with appetite loss and diarrhea improved the most during the treatment. And did you know that they also patterned it according to cold, heat, deficiency, and excess pattern. So, if you notice, all of them have asterisks, meaning the study results are significant. So, what are they trying to point out here? They're trying to point out here that moxibustion is very effective specifically for cold, deficient in even excess pattern. Heat pattern, it's not that significant. No? So basically, that's what does this um, slide is trying to tell us. No? That uh, compared to the usual care group, moxibustion was more effective in the cancer-related fatigue patients with cold pattern, deficiency pattern, and excess pattern at weeks 9 and 13. No? So, uh, the discussion here would basically revolve around MOXA group showed significantly alleviated fatigue and improved quality of life compared to the usual care group. SHAM MOXA also showed significant improvement in the BFI score compared to the usual care group. So 
How to explain that? It may involve modulation of your autonomic nervous system, your HPA axis, and antioxidant activities. And it can also be related to modulation of inflammatory cytokines and neurotransmitters and ano, promoting uh, it more towards an anti-inflammatory state. No? So, moxibustion actually uh, used to improve the quality of life in the management of cancer patients. Lalo na for those with GI symptoms, specifically your diarrhea, they use the local abdominal point CV8, CV12, CV4, and stomach 36. And they found that moxa here can alleviate diarrhea. And then um, here, I want to emphasize here, Moxa is primarily used for deficiency or cold syndrome due to its warming and nourishing effects. However, it is also applied in excess or heat syndrome. But the general um, notion is that Moxa is more effective in the cold pattern than the heat pattern. Then uh, there's no difference in the actual temperature between the cold and heat patterns. Moxa can be applied for both deficiency and excess patterns. Moxa is generally considered a treatment suitable for the deficiency pattern because it has been used in chronic disease and considered an energy supplementing treatment in traditional medicine. Mm. So basically, CRF or your cancer-related fatigue, it's related to yang deficiency and qi deficiency. Moxa can have therapeutic effects on both the excess and deficiency pattern. And then um, local thermotherapy can reduce the stress response by increasing your PNS activity or parasympathetic nervous system. Okay. However, still, they would say the exact mechanism is unknown. Further studies to explore the therapeutic mechanisms of MOXA is still needed. And then uh, they concluded that generally safe to apply MOXA to cancer-related fatigue patients. Um, usually, uh, this study just focuses on chronic CRF patients. They were not able to focus on acute ARF or uh, acute cancer-related fatigue, more or less chronic. No, so it's in the towards the end. No, um, applying moxa in practice needs caution depending on the stage and location of the cancer. They said that the results failed to prove that moxa is superior to placebo, although there was an interesting prolonged effect of moxibustion during the follow-up period. So in conclusion, confirm the efficacy and safety of moxibustion for cancer-related fatigue to usual care. Moxibustion showed a significantly prolonged effect after four weeks of the follow-up period. We found that moxa was effective in all groups except for the heat pattern group. But this is now being slowly challenged, no? further research, because I'd like to believe MOXA can still exert effect on the heat pattern. Okay, so more studies related. So this is for cancer-related fatigue. Next, July 2020, on the peak of the epidemic, actually um, came out this study, no? the effect or of moxibustion on stress-induced delayed gastric emptying via somato-autonomic reflex in rats. We all know moxa can really help with boosting one's appetite. So they tried to analyze the exact mechanism sa, uh, using the rats as the treatment samples. No? So the exact mechanisms underlying the beneficial effects of moxibustion are still unknown. So usually they perform indirect moxa at stomach 36 bilaterally throughout the stress loading. So they just gathered some rats and then the rats were placed in a restrained stress. So definitely um, they would have a limited gastric emptying. So what they did was they used a moxa cone, a small moxa stick, roughly around uh, 2 cm. No? And then they burned it and then burning it at around usually <clears throat> two, three minutes, they already reached the temperature of roughly 60 to 62 degrees Celsius. Peak temperature was actually 65.7 uh, in the range of roughly three minutes going four minutes. No? And then you take a look at the this graphical representation. 
So they divided eight groups of uh, three groups of rats, eight rats each. One in the control, one in the restrained stress, and one in restrained stress with moxibustion. So this is the percentage of gastric emptying. How much did you empty your stomach? No? So basically what they want to see here is can moxa really help with moving your bowels or your colons to help promote your ano, intestinal motility, hence producing appetite and improving metabolism. So the control group, they just observe roughly has a score of 70, 70 to 80 roughly. No? And then the restraint stress has significant decrease in the gastric emptying because you're under stress. So you cannot empty much. You are in a state of fight or flight. That's why uh, if you're in a state of fight or flight, your digestion and your metabolism goes down, meaning you cannot empty that much. However, take a look here. When they did moxa on those with restrained stress, it restores or it increases your gastric emptying from roughly 40% to approximately 70%. So it's like an addition of 30% increased gastric emptying. So meaning moxa has an effect for moving your colons, your digestion. No? And then also here, take a look. Um, here, they did it, a, they're trying to analyze what exactly helps it. No? So they use uh, atropine, but it has no significant effects. However, when they have a rat that underwent vagotomy, meaning severe of your vagus nerve, they found out that even if you do moxibustion, it has no effect. So basically, what it tries to tell us here is that moxibustion may have an effect through the vagus nerve or through your parasympathetic nervous system. So it is mediated by the vagal pathway via your muscarinic receptors. So the results that indirect moxa at stomach 36 reduce stress-induced inhibition of gastric emptying significantly. RS-induced restraint stress delayed gastric emptying may be ameliorated by indirect moxa at stomach 36. So, they concluded that as a complementary and alternative medicine, indirect moxa may also be advantageous for patients with gastric disorders such as functional dyspepsia. So, moxibustion is also one way to promote their colon function. No? Okay? So, moving forward, is July 17, 2020, they were thinking the effects of moxa smoke in epidemic prevention. We already talked about the moxa smoke. Let's see what they found out in this journal. No? So, um, before, they tried this one, specifically with the, uh, with the rise of the COVID-19 in this time. They were really exploring the effects of moxa smoke. So, the ancient scholars believe that... Um, Moxa, moxibustion by fumigation is the most common method in epidemic prevention. And then the moxa smoke, essential oil produced by burning the moxa, has actually anti-inflammation, antiviral, suppressing cough, relieving asthma, and strengthening immunity. So the mechanism of moxa fumigation in the epidemic prevention, actually they're, what they're trying to, to analyze here is the how the smoke actually disinfects no for to prevent uh, epidemic so the first notice no noticeable findings they see is it blocks transmission route so blocking aerosol transmission route is great significance for the prevention of epidemic so researchers show that moxa smoke achieves its prevention role by killing pathogenic bacteria and take a look forming micromembrane barrier meaning Aside from the moxa smoke disinfecting the area, when moxa smoke uh, comes in contact with your throat or your mucous membranes, it can form a micromembrane barrier. So this micromembrane barrier can help uh, prevent the transmission of certain epidemic. No? So see, even in flu season, in HEPA B, other infections, they use moxa and they have a very good disinfection rate. And then 
they analyze it based on the um, doses. No? They divide it into 2.5 gram per square meter, 5 gram per square meter, and 10 gram per square meter respectively. It is discovered that the antibacterial effect of each dose group is 100% in a day after disinfection. But, but after two days in the 2.5 gram per square meter group, the, the effect is just ano, um, in two days. But for 5 gram and 10 gram, the effect can range up until four days no? or 96 hours after this infection. So the fumigation of your moxa, moxa not only inhibits or kills bacteria and viruses in the air, but also forms a micromembrane barrier in the mouth and nose to prevent the invasion of influenza or your flu viruses. The other mechanism of how it can help with epidemic prevention is improving immunity. As what we have taught, talked about MOXA, MOXA improves the immune function of the person's body in uh, regulating, shifting it from a pro-inflammatory to an anti-inflammatory state, increases your WBC and CD4 T cells. So they also stated here, no? that moxibustion assisted also with HIV, specifically your antiretroviral therapy. So moxa would be a nice complementary treatment for those uh, people suffering with HIV because moxa can boost immunity. So, okay, comes the age-old question. Actually, the safety of the smoke of moxa. The safety remains controversial. Certain concentration of moxa smoke is relatively safe, no? But actually, um, uh, they, they, there are reports of incidents of chronic pharyngitis among physicians of the Department of Accio and Moxa doing moxibustion smoke, no? So um, they had pharyngeal discomfort or cough after moxa. And then their peg was, uh, they limit the human safety concentration was 2.75 milligram per cubic square. So, in essence, what they're trying to say, most researchers believe that harmful substances can be controlled within a safe range by constructing a good exhaust ventilation system. But the attention should still be paid to the air quality problems caused by moxa smoke. So if you have a good ventilation in your clinic or specific practices, rest assured that the, the harmful effects of smoke is negligible, almost negligible. You need to have a good exhaust ventilation system. Also, it states here the role of essential oil is important in the function of the moxa smoke. However, they still have ano eh, doubts about it. So more researches are needed to, to analyze it. No? Okay. Also, um, what they're trying to say here, um, believe that moxa smoke may prevent also no, atherosclerosis. Um, but however, they, need, they still need to do more research about it. But they have a very good, already, they have a very good findings of the moxibustion smoke disinfecting the areas. No? So, in conclusion, uh, this was actually recommended to be promoted in the aspect of prevention of virus transmission. However, they still need to do a lot of research studies for it. But as of now, as of July 2020, it states that the moxa smoke can disinfect no, the area. Okay? It has also antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal effects when you are using a traditional smoke moxa, which are not the attributes of a smokeless moxa. No? Okay, next. In September 2019, MOXA about intervertebral degeneration no? in a rat model. So it states that it can improve the intervertebral degeneration of, of the rats. No? So they tried to analyze it. Actually, they say in the abstract that moxibustion may be beneficial to IDD by enhancing autophagy and reducing apoptosis or self-destruction of your nucleus pulposus cells via your HIF1-alpha or your VEGF pathway. 
So uh, actually, for those of you that doesn't know, autophagy no, is the body's way of cleaning out damaged cells in order to regenerate newer, healthier cells. So it's a natural process by which the body cleans out your damaged or damaged cells or unnecessary components. So this is a histopathologic slide of the intervertebral disc of those with uh of those of those rats no so as you can see here the lumbar intervertebral space was wide the arrangement of fibrous strings was regular and the number of np cells and interstitial cells did not decrease significantly in the sham operated rats no however in your idd those with intervertebral degeneration as you can see it has like a shrink like eh? it has a shrink like area that's why it becomes degenerated. So what they did here, no? So they did here moxibustion treatment for your intervertebral disc uh, rats, no? As what you can see, no? Take a look. So this is the normal or healthy rats. They have a very smooth edge, no? Smooth edge with uh, no, good, good tissue outline. But for IDD rats, take a look. Take a look at the edges. It's like uh, crumpled or degenerated or withered. No? And then if you can see here, at the bottom is your histo immune histopath staining no? for, for this um, the COX-2 and agrican, which is involved in your um, connective tissue repair. So interestingly, when they did the MOXA, take a look from this appearance, it became smoother. Did you see? Did you notice that it becomes a bit smoother, the outline of your intervertebral disc, disc? And then also in the histopath stain, take a look. For those with IDD, they don't have much staining, meaning the cells are not that active for uh, doing treatment repair. But when you do MOXA, it significantly brightened up or more cells were active that are involved in the repair of your intervertebral disc so as to prevent your IDD disc degeneration. So for those of you wondering what they did is moxibustion with a moxta stick for 20 minutes once a day for 10 days as one course. So they continued it for three courses. So it means um, 30 days or one month continues of moxta stick for 20 minutes no, at the local area. So as you can see, it has a good, good, um, mukhang good effect, no, in repair. Specifically, this one, from a damaged one to a smoothened, outlined one, almost parallel with the normal or your sham group, no. And then for the immune histopath staining, it when you do moxa, more cells are involved in connective tissue repair. So basically, this is what this slide is telling us. And then um, this one just basically uh, the expression rate of the COX-2 and Agrican. But um, basically what we just want to show here is that when you do moxibustion treatment, you would increase uh, towards uh, increasing connective tissue repair and preventing apoptosis of your respective cells. No? Again, some other stains here. Um, they concluded that basically HIF1 alpha and VEGF pathway modulates the moxibustion effect to prevent your IDD de degeneration in the rats. No? So uh, huh? basically, ito, take a look here. No? They concluded, take a look at the study, concluded that Overexpress HIF1 alpha exerted beneficial effects on IDD. The role of moxibustion in intervertebral disc degeneration may be related to apoptosis and autography via the HIF1 alpha VEGF pathway. Okay? So, very interesting study. Another interesting study, MOXA at CB4 in 2019, it serves to alleviate atherosclerotic lesions in the heart of your apolipoprotein E deficient mice. So what they did here was an indirect MOXA stick at CB4. Only CB4. They use CB4 only. So all treatments were performed 20 minutes per day, six days per week for 12 weeks or, or three months. No? 
So every day. So you have to do that every day. So what did they found out here in this study? That it may be effective by regulating your blood li lipid levels. No? So they, me they measured your total cholesterol, triglyceride, bad cholesterol, good cholesterol, and APOA1. No? So if you notice here, uh, AS means atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis, AS plus M, atherosclerosis plus moxibustion. So your moxa decreases your triglyceride and your bad cholesterol significantly when you do moxa. And then it also increases your APOA1 for reverse cholesterol transport. So basically, that's what they're trying to say in this slide. Also, this is a histopath stain of the coronary artery of the aortic root of the rats for the control. The normal rats, they don't have any lesion. For those with atherosclerotic plaques, no, you can see here, it's obstructing the lumen. This is your plaque. And then when you do a moxa for those rats suffering from atherosclerosis, take a look at the lumen. It widens up a bit. no? It widens up. So the plaque area percentage in aortic root decreases when you do a moxibustion. So again, take a look. For the control group, for the normal healthy rats, it's clear, clean, uh, very clean. No? But for atherosclerotic lesion, you have this AS atherosclerotic plaque. And when you do a moxa, take a look at what happens. Your plaque diminishes or decreases but you still have some remnants here as you can see so they found out that moxa continuously for three months no six days a week can help in the rats to decrease their atherosclerotic lesions this slide basically just tells us the pathway for the cholesterol reverse cholesterol but basically um it just states that moxibustion treatment showed a better therapeutic effect than diet therapy. So moxa suppresses the development of atherosclerotic reasons by regulating your lipid metabolism, thrombogenesis, and inflammatory reactions. No? So um, those treated with moxibustion showed less formation of AS plaque and less lipid content in the aorta, which demonstrate the anti-atherogenic effect of moxibustion. So, uh, moxibustion, take a look at the green one. Moxibustion at CB4 downregulated the increased triglyceride and bad cholesterol and upregulated the decreased APOA1 in APOE deficient mice, meaning it increases your reverse cholesterol transport. That can help decrease your uh, atherosclerotic plaque accumulation or risk in the human vessels. So, um, this one just basically just shows you what pathway they followed. So, hmm, through promoting the reverse cholesterol transport mediated by your LXR alpha, ABCA1 APOA1, moxibustion may prevent foam cell formation and cholesterol accumulation, thus, relieving the progression of your atherosclerotic lesion. So, in conclusion, what they concluded was MOXA treatment at CB4 suppresses the progression of AS lesions. Anti-atherogenic effect may be achieved by regulation of lipid metabolism and upregulation of your um, reverse cholesterol transport receptors so as to help, help decongest that area. No? So that's how that's the conclusion of this study. Okay. So last but not the least um, is this study no? about moxibustion and your microbiomes or your gut, gut, uh, gut microbiomes and immune function. So they basically divided this one with healthy controls together with ulcerative colitis, which is an autoimmune disorder manifesting at the lower part of the colon. So what they did was they, com way they tried to compare no? Moxa, the moxa effect for these different groups. So the moxa cones were used on a herb cake. It was placed on stomach 25 bilateral with moxa for 10 minutes once a day for seven days. 
Herb cakes were prepared with Chinese medicine powder and yellow wine into the size of 1 cm in diameter, 0.5 cm thick, and the skin temperature acupoints was in the range of 43 plus or minus 1. No? So, um, they found out that uh, MOXA decreased submucosal inflammatory cell infiltration in colitis rats. So, let's take a more closer look at it. No? So these are your healthy controls. These are those with ulcerative colitis. These are those with ulcerative colitis who receive MOXA for 7 days, MOXA for 14 days. Ulcerative colitis treated with the conventional treatment of mesalazine. And then healthy controls of MOXA bastion, those with no problem, but does MOXA for one week and 14 days. So what did they, so if you can see, no, the ones with the lowest weight gains are the ones or the rats with the ulcerative colitis. Those treated with moxibustion has improved weight gain. And then those that are healthy, healthy control doing moxa has uh, the same level with a healthy control. Okay? So histopathologic slide. So healthy control, it's nice, it's smooth, it's complete. Ulcerative colitis model, you have an ulcer, this one. This depression here is the ulcer. For those that does MOXA for one week and 14 days, take a look at the ulcer. It shrinks or it minimizes. Kumbaga, lumiit po siya. No? If, if you can see, no? if you notice, and then by two weeks after, your ulcer almost nangalahate or became one half of the size. For those that does your conventional treatment with mesalazine, from this ulcer, it improved, but it's still quite a bit big. No? And then for the healthy controls, of course, they don't have ulcers. You can just see the beauty of your colonic cells. No? So, uh, this is the histopath score. So the histopathologic score is the score of your ulcer. Generally, the higher your score, the more severe it is. So if you take a look, the one with the highest score is definitely the one with the ulcer group that has no treatment. For those ulcer group that does treatment, their histopath score are much lower. No? And then for those that have healthy controls, definitely they don't have any histopath score or, or so. So basically what we're trying to say, we, uh, if you do a MOXA, together also with your conventional treatment of mesalazine, you can improve the ulcer. But what they did find out was very interesting. Did you know that the, in the colon mucosa, they measured the level of your cytokines or your inflammatory cytokines? And then they found out, no, generally the finding was this. After moxibustion treatment, the levels of these inflammatory cytokines were significantly decreased. And anti-inflammatory cytokines were increased. So basically, for anti-inflammation cytokines such as your IL-2, IL-10, and transforming growth factor beta, they were all increased by moxibustion. And those that promote inflammation were all decreased. No? So I want you to remember IL-10. IL-10 is an anti-inflammatory anti-inflammation uh, interleukin, you want a higher level of that. So from an ulcerative colitis like this na mahina or slow secretion of anti-inflammation, MOXA can help the repair by improving immunity of the gut microbiome by increasing your IL-10. The rest, moxibustion, take a look, the red and the green, they are all decreased because these are all pro-inflammatory cytokines. Okay, so this is basically what this, this slide tells us. And then when they check the serum of the rats by blood, no, same findings. Take a look at IL-2, IL-10, and transforming growth factor beta. Their are cytokines between ulcerative colitis and one week of MOXA increase. So IL-2, IL-10, TGF beta are anti-inflammatory, so moxibustion will increase them. The rest, moxibustion will decrease kasi these are all pro-inflammation cytokines. You don't want them. You want them lessened. So moxa lessens them. So your moxa shifts your body from a pro-inflammatory state 
to an anti-inflammatory state. So the research conclusion, MOXA exerts its therapeutic effect by modulating the microbiome and intestinal mucosal immunity. It helps with your gut microbiome, according to this study in 2018. Okay, last but not the least of the research is clinical long snake MOXA for immune function in allergic rhinitis disease patient. So they, uh, for those with AR, they did a long snake moxa at the back, no? So from your do 14 all the way to your mingman or lumbosacral area, they did the moxa. So the results here was after treatment, they have marked improvements in their symptoms. Then plasma IL-26 and CGMP were decreased, while your plasma camp, CAMP, CGMP were upregulated in both groups. Same same findings. Shifting from a pro-inflammatory state to an anti-inflammatory state, they concluded that the long snake moxa treatment is effective in improving symptoms of AR patients, which may be related to its function in mobilizing the body's immune function. And therapeutic effects of moxibustion were considerably superior to those taking the herbal medicine Yu Ping Feng in clinical effective rate and lowering your plasma IL-2-6 CGMP components and raising your CAMP CGMP ratio. So with that being said, that's the last of the research presentation for today. Thank you very much for listening and thank you for showing interest in the Paai, uh, Paai Lamp Moxibustion webinar. Hopefully, one day we can organize more workshop for Moxibastion as we have organized our first workshop here in Paay in se last September 2022. So with that being said, thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you for showing interest for the topic of Moxibastion. And thank you for supporting LAMP and Paay in its endeavors. With that being said, I wish each and every one of you good day. Thank you.